I love open space, and I've worked really hard to protect it. But what I want to talk to you about today is cutting down trees right here in Santa Cruz County. Now, I know that might sound like sacrilege coming from a conservationist like me, but I want to explain why it's important and how it has potential global significance. I want to take you on a thought journey. And I want to start that journey by reviewing what open space does for us. It lifts our spirits. It fills our bellies. It cleans our air and sequesters our carbon. It quenches our thirst. It provides habitat for our fellow planet dwellers. And it provides materials for shelter. In fact, open space we depend on for our very survival. We added one billion people over the last 14 years. In the next 12 years, we're going to add another billion. How are we possibly going to provide the open space that all these additional people are going to require? In order to begin to tackle that huge question, I'd like to focus on Santa Cruz as a microcosm and I'd like to talk in particular about shelter. We're so blessed here in Santa Cruz County. We have a mild Mediterranean climate found only on 2% of the Earth's surfaces. We have rich, fertile soils. We have redwood forests. We have regulations that help protect those. We pioneered the organic food movement here. We embrace our local production and consumption of food. We join CSAs. We go to the farmer's market. We order grass-fed beef from Joe Morris, and we do that because we know it reduces our carbon footprint. We also do that because it provides meaning to the food that we eat. It's time that we embrace the very same concepts to our building materials. It's time that we embrace our local supply of green, renewable building material. This is Watsonville. We still have Watsonville folks? Watsonville's, yeah, yeah, Watsonville. This is their Water Resource Center. It's LEED certified. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy Environmental Design. It's an international framework for encouraging green building design and construction. Within the LEED ranking system, the more locally sourced your materials are, the higher your rating. The more renewable your materials are, the higher your rating. This beautiful building earned the highest level of platinum. Folks, if we want to have green buildings, we have to have green building materials. The redwood use in this building was harvested from the city's working forest at Grizzly Flats and was a big part of why they earned this high rating. So as we move forward with this journey, please keep in mind that redwoods are a renewable resource. Other building materials like concrete, steel, glass, contain elements that have to be mined. When those mines are exhausted, that's it. So this map shows Santa Cruz County. The dark green are our forests. You can see that two-thirds of our county are covered in forests. Most of them are redwood. At the turn of the last century, these forests were mostly clear-cut. Thank goodness for people who organized to help protect some of the old-growth forests that we can still enjoy today at Big Basin and Henry Cal, Cal State Parks. And I'd like to shout out um, to my friends and partners at Semper Virons Fund and Save the Redwoods League for doing that work so long ago. Yeah. So the forests that were decimated have, have had over 100 years to recover. And since the 70s, we have had some of the most restrictive regulations on timber harvest than found anywhere in the world. And we've also pioneered an alternative to clear cutting called selective timber harvest. And that was started and pioneered in the 1940s. So what does a forest look like that was originally clear cut and then has been managed under the sustainable uh, timber, selective timber process look like? Well, it looks like a lot like the Land Trust's Burn Mill Iron Forest. This is a 400 acre forest that we essentially have divided into three sectors. They are harvested once every five years. We actually have a special section that we're grooming to have old growth characteristics, so eventually we'll stop, stop harvesting in that section, but that's another story. So in the working forest, in the sustainable working forest sectors, what that means on a rotation 
is that we only disturb each, rotation, each sector once every 15 years. And we do that, we do that in a window of time of only a few months that's designed to reduce and, and minimize the impacts to nesting birds, traveling amphibians, water quality, et cetera. We cut about 60% of growth when we return to a, a sector, so that means that the average trees are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Those logs are milled locally, and they're available for purchase locally and, and in the region, so that helps our local economy, creates jobs. When we harvest, we pay significant timber taxes. Those go to the county coffers and come back to the form of us in service, in, in ser for services. And we use the profits on this forest to take care of it. So we use it to help re in, re eliminate invasive species, to maintain trails. This is open to the public. Um, and to, to just basically have all the, the care that it needs. In this uneven age forest, there is light and there is diversity, and plants and wildlife flourish here. This video was taken by ecologist Dr. Jody McGraw. Aw. <laughs> Dr. Chris Wilmers, who studies mountain lions, reports that mountain lions thrive in the working forests of the Santa Cruz Mountains. Compare that to nearby Nicene State Parks. That forest, which was originally clear-cut, logging has been prohibitive. So all the trees are the exact same generation, all competing for the exact same resources. To take the path of trying to manage extraction of resources with the protection of resources requires a very complex management plan and approach. In Santa Cruz County alone, we're going to have to add an additional 17,000 housing units in the next 25 years. We're going to have to figure out how to accommodate an additional 145,000 in the Monterey Bay region. That's the size of the city of Salinas. As demand for building materials grow, are we going to further and further constrict the logging that can occur in, in, the, in the Redwoods and the Santa Cruz Mountains? Are we going to continue to do that to the point where there is no timber industry and therefore no logging? And if we do that, are we going to stop using wood? If we're honest with ourselves, the answer is no. In fact, what it means is that we'll import all of our wood from other places places under the exact same types of pressures that our place is, and certainly with more lax regulations. That will mean that we'll be getting our timber from places like British Columbia, the Congo, Latin America. It means that if we do that, we're outsourcing our environmental impact to preserve our own backyards. I submit that that's not good global citizenship, and in the long run, it's not sustainable. And if that happens on a global basis, what that means is people like us in places like ours will create islands of privilege, and basically will have a world divided into environmental haves and have-nots. I know it's hard to think about cutting down trees. I love nature, I'm sure you do too. But if you think about it, it's not if we're gonna cut down trees, it's how and it's where. So I imagine a future where we have a bias towards local, sustainably produced wood, where we take great care of our natural systems, where our architecture favors indigenous materials at lower environmental impact, where we export innovative models of resource management, not the byproducts of our consumption where we embrace our local supply of renewable building material in the same way we do our food. In this way, and on a global basis, we'll save all our forests, and ultimately, ourselves. So, as a local conservationist with a worldview, this is the future I'm advocating for. Thank you. <laughs>